Right, here's the Paul Smith video. Right, I'm just going to tell it straight. Right, I first laid eyes on Paul Smith at the Commonwealth Commonwealth Games. Right, he won a silver medal. He fought Jean Pascal in the final. Right. Testicles, one, two, testing. Right, here we go. And everybody said, Paul James Smith from Liverpool, alias Smigger, or hardcore boxing fans call him Smigger Smig. Everybody said he were nailed on to win a world title. And I was one of them people, right? Obviously we all know what happened in uh, Commonwealth Games 2002. He got a silver medal and he fought John Pascal. No shame in losing to John Pascal. Simple reason is John Pascal's still fighting now and he's just beat that Marcus Brown, hasn't he? He just beat him, knocked him out, I think, didn't he? And he's still fighting now, John Pascal. Very fast fighter, very powerful. Uh, but Paul Smith were actually tipped to win. And he, he lost against him in the final. He got a silver medal. So Paul Smith's a decorated... He's a decorated fighter, Paul Smith, right? So 2002, was it? When we come off games, with 2002? I think it were, yeah. So he turned pro, he beat Howard Clark, 27, 35 and 2, on points. Then he knocked out Andrew... Ivano losing record, Silver Fox knocked him out, losing record. Three and six and two, Andrew Ivanov, Silver Fox one and three and oh. Patrick Sito, seven, twelve and one, beat him. Mike Duffield beat him nine and twenty and one. Five, twelve and one, Joel Ainey went to points with him. And then he went to points with Davy Jones who was six and one. So that's his first Gary winning record. Howard Clark's 27 and 42, beat him on points. He knocked Steve Timms out, 8 and 4 and 1. He can punch Steve Timms. But like I said, Paul Smith's just blowing through all these people here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Fucking hell. Paul Smith, so basically Paul Smith's Let's have a look. He's doing well here but You see when he got that win over Paul Smith It took Paul Smith five years to get to that stage at Korea. Now, five years fighting a guy, 28 and 4, and Paul Smith at the time was, don't forget, he just knocked out Kellerenda right before that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, Paul Smith's 23 and 0. Twenty-three and 0 with 12 by knockout. And he is 25 years of age and he gets in there with Stevie Bendel to defend his English title. And everybody's saying Paul Smith's gonna school him. And it didn't work out that way, did it? It didn't work out that way. Now, personally, and I'm not saying this because Stevie Bendel's my mate, personally, a lot of people say Paul Smith got beat. I thought Paul Smith shaded it, right? But the referee, in them days, it was just a referee, they had no judges. The referee, Mark Green, gave it to the other kid by two rounds 
Now at the time, right, Paul Smith's been beat by two rounds. I thought personally, God, you know, you've got a kid here on a Frank Warren show, you were Frank Warren's new star coming through. He's 23 and 0, and Mark Green's referee now. Everybody knows that Mark Green's not one of Frank's favourites, is he? So, what Paul Smith protected on the night, I don't know. He didn't get no favours from referee, none whatsoever. So, and I thought that to me, he was on the slide after that. That's just what I thought. Now, I don't mean to dig anybody out, I'm just saying it as I see it. He's then gone on a good run, two, four. He's, just, he's then won six fights on trot. By this stage, he's stepped up to uh, super middleweight. And he's beat Tony Quigley, split decision. He's beat Tony Dodson. And he's a British champion, right? So well done. He then takes a fight that nobody wanted to take. Nobody wanted to fight. A gold medalist, Olympians, James DeGale. Why is Frank Warren putting him in? With a, a kid like James DeGale, a southpaw that's going to be tricky. Why is he doing that? Why is he putting small Paul Smith in with him? I don't know. I don't know why he's put he put Paul Smith in with, with DeGale. He got knocked out. And after that, I think it's all downhill, isn't it? But to be fair to Paul Smith, he starts again, he comes back, he beats Joseph Matolski, 29 and 15. Then beats Paul Samuels, 21 and 9. So two winning records there. Knocks them both out. He can only knock it, he can only beat who's in front of him. So at the time, I'm still a Paul Smith fan. Right, and this is where you feel for him. I'm not digging him out, I feel for him at this stage. Obviously, further down the line, I don't think he's done himself any favours. But I started to see in Paul Smith the fact that his body shape didn't look as trim as what he did when he when, a few years earlier. Look at Frotch's physique all the way through his career, his physique got better all the time, didn't it? But some fighters, the physiques tend to get a bit worse, like James Tony. You know, people like that. Frotch has got better. He started off a bit skinny, and, and then he, and he got a little bit muscular and athletic as he went through. Because you're putting effort in. Paul Smith just looked to me like he, he just let his thing go a little bit. But I think that defeat against Steve Bendel, I think that turned his life on its head. Because he went from being the star, well, the superstar of Frank's up and coming bunch, you know, that class of 2002 that Mick Henry said, well, he was Frank's 2000 and class of 2, wasn't he? Paul Smith. By this stage, the De Gale and the Groves people are coming into the, you know, your Frankie Gavin, Billy Joe Saunders, James De Gale, people like that have come on the scene from the 2008 Olympics, whereas Paul Smith were that. GB team from 2000, wasn't he? At Commonwealth Games 2002. Now, he's gone in with George Groves, a big puncher who beat James DeGale in the amateurs. And James DeGale went to Olympics and Groves didn't, so work that out. So James DeGale, he's been, he's won gold medal, he's with Frank Warren, He's 8 to know. Paul Smith's gone in with him. Why would Frank put them together anyway? Why don't you keep them apart? I don't. I didn't. I didn't get that. Me. I didn't. I didn't get it. I just didn't get it. You've got Paul Smith there, 29 and one, 29 wins, one defeat, and he's going up against Olympic gold medalist in James De Gale. So then. He gets in with Grove, so he's 31 and 2. Still chance for Paul Smith to win a world title. What's Frank going to do? Puts him in with Groves, the kid who'll beat who who beat the game is a puncher. And it's biggest super middleweight you've ever seen in your life. The biggest super middleweight 
ever. Thick set. Groves walks around 15 stone. Walks about 15 stone. And takes three stone off. So he puts a minimum of a stone on. Groves minimum. Groves is over 13 stone in ring. No, without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. He had 12, 13 pounds on Frotch. That's a true story, that, when they fought. I know that because Carl Frotch told me himself. And you can quote me on that. Carl Frotch gives loads of weight away. And Paul Smith did. He's giving weight away. Groves knocks him out. Do you know what? It might have been a... a it might have been a different story. Groves knocked Paul Smith out, but at the end of the first round, it had been a different story because Paul Smith got to him, but there were no time left, were there? So, he gets knocked out by Groves. What then? Paul Smith's 30, 31, 31 and 3. Right? 31 wins, 3 defeats. But none of you can tell me who his best win is. Tony, Tony Dodson, isn't it? And then Tony Quigley. They're his best wins. He comes back, fights Tommy Tolan. He's got four wins, 12 defeats and a draw. And this is where I feel for Paul Smith, because when you've been just like Frotch, where you don't go to Olympics, but skin the sea vest, and then you get a... You get, you get to you get a silver medal in Commonwealth Games, right? And that was a strong Commonwealth Games. That what what he were in, and obviously the middleweight division as well, right? So when you're when you've been at the high levels, and then you're in pros, and you've got these up and comers like Groves and De Gale, and nobody wants to fight him. And Paul Smith's not old, but he's he's of that he's a, he, he's at his peak. And them guys are trying to find the peak, and he's like, yeah, I'll fight him. Who knows, he might have sparred him before I fancied it. But this is where you tend to feel for a fighter, but also, the fighter's got to sell the fight, so he's got to come out with things that he might not necessarily want to come out with on social media to sell it. And then everybody gets on his back, don't they? And if you... If you take things to art, you're going to reply, aren't you? And I can see... He hasn't done his send any favours, but he's had a lot of stick, hasn't he? Well, he fights Tommy Tolan after Groves' loss. So he beats the journeyman, knocks, uh, knocks him out. And then he gets a shot at the vacant British title. Now, my argument with that is this. That title's been parked up ages because of the Robin Reed kenny Anderson fight. Now... Kenny Anderson failed a drug test for amphetamine. And Robin Reed didn't get to know about this. That's a true story. He was the last to know. He ended up finding out months later off of Kenny Anderson's team. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Robin Reed wouldn't have retired if he'd, have, if he'd found out straight away. He should have been straight, that should have been a no contest. And Robin Reed should have fought Tony Dodson or Paul Smith for that vacant belt. And they'd have been good fights, wouldn't they then? Because Robin, uh, Robin will tell you himself he were on the slide then. Or he 41 year old. You know, he was just looking for one, one more fight. You know, one more bit of glory. And Paul Smith at this stage of the game, still got loads left in the tank. But I don't think he was getting treated as nice as what he should have been treated. As what his standing should have been. And I'm not being a Paul Smith arse like I'm saying that, but... We're talking about somebody here that massive noise were, massive things were predicted. You know, like Callum has ended up producing good, has he? And he's been navigated properly. Well, who's to say that if Gallagher hadn't have had Paul Smith at the beginning, he might, not, he might have done the same thing for Paul. I don't know, but I can imagine Paul Smith and Frank Warren behind the scenes going at it because I just don't see how, how he's been treated fairly. I don't know, but, but anyway... I think by, I'm not sure if he'd left by this stage, can't be sure, let me have a look. Yeah, I think he'd left by this stage. Or he might have got a British title and left, so don't quote me on that. You'd have to check where the Dodson-Smith fight was. Was that on the Frank Warren show? Or was that on an Eddie Hearn show? I can't remember, it's that long ago, let me have a look. Eddie Hearn. <laughs> 
So it must have left old fish eyes front by this stage then. I bet he left after at Grove's loss. Well anyway. It's one of them careers, isn't it, Paul Smith? That you always felt that could have done more. Be like Billy Joe really, isn't it? You feel that he could have been like a Carl Zaggy, don't you? A Ray Leonard kind of thing, but he, he's not going to do that, is he? He's going to be an opponent for Canelo, isn't he now? Do you know what I mean? Uh, so Paul Smith's gone in with Tommy Tolan, and then he's beat Tony Dodson for vacant British title. So he's a two-time British champion. Two-time British champion. He's then got, he's then fought Jamie Ambler and David Sarabia. They're not for title fights. It looks like he's get belt up by this stage. And then he's got him with, oh sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry, where am I coming at? Yeah. Oh yeah, I was correct there, sorry. Tony Dodson, he's beat him. Then he's fought Ambler and Sarabia. Then he's fought Andre Ward. No, half Ray Bram, half Ray Bram, Andre Ward. So back up a little bit. Why is he fighting Jamie Ambler and David Sarabia after Tony Dodson fight? So he's got the British title, right, and he's with Eddie Hearn. But why is Paul Smith, a decorated amateur, two-time British champion and world ranked in the top five, why is Paul Smith fighting David Sarabia and Jamie Ambler? I don't know. Is it is it at Christmas to get to get him out? Yeah, it looks like it's at Christmas to get him out. Fourteenth for December. Yeah, but you won't. What you won't have a camp for that, would you? You won't have it. You won't even. I don't know. Why is he fight? Why have they got Paul Smith fighting Jamie Ambler and he's and he's and he's he's up there, isn't he? So he beats Ambler on points. Beats Sarabi and knocks him out, ices him. He then fights Arthur Abraham. I had him losing the Arthur Abraham fight by one round. I've seen people say he could have won it. I had him losing by a round. It's in Germany. The cut scorecards were shocking. Ref didn't do him no favours. They get a rematch in Germany. He, he lost that one by about three, four rounds. So we agree with that. And then you think it's about it, don't you, really? And you feel short changed by his career. Then out of nowhere, he gets the Andre Ward fight. So after two world title losses, he gets the Andre Ward fight. Comes in four pound overweight. Uh, after the Andre Ward fight, he fights a guy with 18 wins and 18 losses and two draws. Grafka. He then fights, he beats him on points, then fights a guy 28 and 13. Right, he then gets a world title shot again. So Eddie Hearn has delivered for him, and he got dropped in 12th round, didn't he? He lost on points against Zuga, who were undefeated. So Zuga undefeated. Uh, Zuga, two hard for Abraham fights. Zuga's undefeated, by the way, and Abraham's one of the Super Six guys. Groves and De Gale. So Paul Smith's basically only lost in good company. And the Stevie Benno fight, you could say he won that, couldn't you really? You could I could see him being disgusted with that decision. So if you take the Stevie Benno fight off, he lost to De Gale, Groves, De Gale Groves, Arthur Abraham twice, Ward and Zuga. So of his seven defeats, I class six really as defeats. Uh, they're all world champions, so he f he f went at that elite level, didn't he? And didn't get there, did he? He didn't. But you'd have to say Paul Smith, even though he's only never won a belt above British level, you'd have to say, yeah, he's European level, wouldn't you? Stroke world. You would you would say that, wouldn't you? But you say definite European level, definitely European level. Definitely European level. I'm not being a Paul Smith fan. I just think it's a career of... I don't think Callum will make the mistakes that Paul Smith's made. I think Callum's watched what's happened with Stephen. 
who I think is the best Dalek lot, technically. I think he's, I think Callum's watched what's happened with his brothers and thought, I'm not going to make them mistakes. And I think Liam's probably watched as well. I think with Stephen Smith's been on lucky injuries. Uh, Stephen and Paul, you say Euro level, wouldn't you? You say they're Euro level. Uh, Callum's world level, isn't he? Because he's a world champion. Elite level, he can go to elite level if he gets an, a, a, another couple of wins. I want to see him fight somebody who's elite, though, like Canelo. I like to see that fight. Liam, you say he's world level, won't you? I don't know if he is now, but he were world level, won a world title. He's been in and fought Canelo, but he got beat, didn't he? But he, he performed well, didn't he? Ryan Rhodes, he's another one. He didn't win a world title, but you say he's world level, wouldn't you? So, and Ryan, obviously, Ryan's beat, a four, beat uh, Paul Silky Jones. He won a world title, didn't he? But boxing, there's a fine line between success, isn't there? It's very, very, very fine. Very, very, very fine indeed. Very, 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 very fine indeed. But it is what it is, isn't it? So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. How many minutes are we on here? 21 minutes. 21 minutes. Not looking too good, is it, for weather? Not looking too good at all. Not looking too good at all. But I'm fed up of talking. I'm fed up of talking bullshit. I don't know if I'm going to go to Glynn's now. I might as well just... Might as well just go to my Wales and just have a walk bag or something. I ain't got no gloves, have I? Not fetch my gloves. But, uh, but yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed doing this video today, the Paul Smith video. It's been emotional. And there's a few people asking me what I thought about his career. Well, I've just told you, Anna, there. Bad decision by a referee can mentally affect a fighter. He can start going to bed at night, all his dreams are squashed. It can have a knock-on effect for the future for him. It can affect all sorts of things. It can affect people around him. He might start questioning his team around him. I don't know, but that referee, these referees need to get start getting it spot on. I've seen a bad decision with one against Jamie McDonald before he got with Dennis. Jamie McDonald had a couple of bad ones and I thought, God, I wish harsh. Uh, but like I said, uh, bad decisions can affect lives. Bad decisions, like that VAR decision. That could have affected title, couldn't it, if they give City that penalty. Do you know what I mean? So, that's what I reckon. But, but yeah, bad decision like that. But it is what it is, isn't it? I mean, swing Glyn knows if he's got any gloves. Yeah, cheers, lad. We'll sort a night out this week. I'll throw a shirt on, some trousers, and I'll come down and that, yeah? Because it's hard for me to nail Dennis down all the time. All right, mate. Cheers. A giggling at ring. In the answer is it, Jim. Long way to go if they've got no gloves for me, is it? I want to go home and get my gloves. Could be out gloves, so I think I'm probably just gonna get my gloves and I don't know, might just go up. I don't know, I might just do some cardio or something. I'll just go for just 
go get me gloves. Okay, might as well do the job properly. Can't be missing sessions, can we? We can't be missing sessions. So I think that's about it really. So alright, so peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, shout out to Innovation Allies at Sheffield. Okay then mate, seven o'clock on that day then we'll sort it. Cheers mate. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed the, the video. Sorry about the interruptions and that. I hope you enjoyed the Paul Smith video. Uh, point I'm trying to make is his phone just don't get get on, does it? Uh, point I'm trying to make is there's a fine line between success and Paul Smith's career for me he should have been. He should have been a world champion, shouldn't he? But it, I would have liked to have seen him treated a little bit better. I don't think he should have took the De Gale fight then. I don't know why he took that fight. I don't think uh, he should have took the Groves fight as well. I think them two fights were took at the wrong time. Uh, that's what I think. I think they were took at the wrong time. I think he was shown a lack of respect. But then again, maybe he got offered good money for it. I don't know. I don't know, only he knows, doesn't it? But bad decisions, there were wrong fights at the wrong time with the wrong people. I just think he could have been navigated a little bit better. Put it this way, I've seen fighters 10 times worse than Paul Smith win world titles. All right? So, peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. And remember, when you tweet people, and I've been guilty of this in the past, just remember that the boxers and the quite some of them are fragile. It's a fragile sport. Some of them have got big big egos, but some of them can take things to heart. So try and remember what you tweet in future. Alright, peace out.